far as the Old Testament goes, I think Proverbs 31, 10 through 31 is probably the biggest chunk as far as what to look for in and, and to aspire to in being a virtuous wife mm-hmm. um, and and mom because this is this, what go this, ahead. Oh, sorry sorry this is what men are supposed to look to as a, a standard in looking for a wife mm-hmm. so. well and and I would say um, husbands looking to help their wives grow mm-hmm. it, it's a good blueprint for where your wife should be going Mm -hmm. and as the head of the household it's the man's responsibility to help her achieve those um and like you said it's it's written for the man but it does it does provide a good blueprint for women um wives and moms um we mentioned in the last video that a lot of people try to make this out to be for women in general and it's not really for women in general um it's not for the wants to be single forever entrepreneur you know that kind of thing is it (laughs) being a wife and a mother is pretty much interwoven into this entire thing you can't get away from it um so i didn't want to read this entire section because it's it's kind of lengthy um so i just made some notes off of it um as to what she is and, and her attributes and things about this godly woman and godly wife um so first she is virtuous um i think that's pretty self-explanatory um and her husband trusts her and she is loyal so would you say that your husband trusts you with anything and everything does he tell you everything do you talk about everything as far as decisions and things in your life are you loyal to him um and, and loyalty can be a couple of different things, you know, um, in a couple of different ways. So, loyalty, you know, like she is loyal to her husband, so... On the face of that, that seems pretty straightforward, but what about when the husband's not around? It's easy to be loyal to somebody when they're there, but what about when the husband's not around? Do you talk about him with friends or family? That's not being loyal. So, I mean, in your thoughts, are you loyal there? Um, I mean, there's just so many different ways you can, when you really think about loyalty, about whether or not you're being truly loyal to your spouse. Um, She does him good all the days of her life. Um, So everything that she does in her day-to-day, in her everyday life, she's putting her family before herself. She's doing good for her husband and her family before herself um she also works hard with her hands for her family um getting up early to cook for her family she's willing to self-sacrifice for her family um walk very far to get supplies um sewing and mending clothing uh just so many different things and i mean Yes, we don't have to do those same things like we used to, but it's, we can still be self-sacrificing for our husbands and our family. And in this culture we live in now, it's kind of all about us, or that's what they want us to think, is it's about me, and if you're not making me happy, then something's wrong with you. Um, Not that I should be serving others and that that will bring joy and reward um she's resourceful and wise with her money um it says that she actually buys a field um and so she she has a little bit of side business it seems when she's has the ability um But you really get the sense in Proverbs 31 that any money she's making is last priority for her. 
So, um, she is strong. Proverbs 31, it states that she cares for the poor and gives to the needy. She anticipates her family's needs and plans accordingly. So, she's a very giving person. You, you can tell that she's giving with her family, she's giving with others, she's giving in her community, giving of her time, giving of herself, giving of her money, whatever is necessary. Um, and she's a thoughtful person because you have to be if you are going to anticipate your family's needs and what they could need. Do they need new shoes? Do they need food? Do they need winter clothes? Do I need to pull the winter clothes out <laughs> because it's going to snow in a week? Um, just different things like that. Um, her husband is known and respected. Now, I find this to be very interesting because we know Proverbs 31 was written for a man um, to help him find a good wife. But it says for him to have a good wife, she must have a good husband. The husband has to be respectable um, and well-known in the community. Um, the John MacArthur Study Bible Commentary uh, said, A man's good reputation begins with his home and thus the virtue of his wife. So, it kind of goes hand in hand. To be a good husband, you have to have a good wife. To be a good wife, you have to have a good husband. Now, there are situations where that can't happen. And you have to lean very heavily on your church community to help you grow. Uh, maybe because your spouse doesn't believe or your spouse isn't where they need to be. Um, but that's part of, of us being a Christian is helping each other grow. She, uh, she took time to sell extra things, which we talked about a little bit, um, when she had like a season to do so or the time to do so. She teaches wisdom. She teaches the law. And she teaches it with mercy um, to, if she's teaching it, it must be to her children more than likely, um, maybe helping in the community as well. But for her to teach it, she has to have it. She has to know the law. Of God she has to know the Word of God um, and she has to have wisdom and she has to be a merciful person and a kind person um, she's a skilled manager of the home it's hard to be a skilled manager of the home when you're not home just gonna put that out there yeah and we'll talk about that a little further in the New Testament because this is Old Testament talk about it in the New Testament